Here in the West and in many so-called developed cultures in the world, we go to some extreme lengths to become beautiful. Plastic surgery, extreme teeth whitening, and many other wild things. But what about some of the more indigenous tribes and peoples of the world? Well, there are some pretty fascinating things out there. From neck extensions to sharpening teeth, here are 15 unusual beauty standards from around the world. Number 15. Ethiopia, the Mercy Tribe. Now for our first dive into the beautiful beauty standards, we have the Mersai tribe, whose territory is on the South Omo zone of southern nations, nationalities and peoples regional state, and close to the border with South Sudan. Now along with their body modifications to find a suitable wife or husband, the men actually partake in battles of combat in order to decide who gets who as a bride, and to prove that they're ready for marriage. The men of the village use a white paint along with a light scarification process along the upper parts of the arms. The scars signify each enemy that's been defeated in battle and show the strength of the man as well. For the women though, they pierce their lower lip beginning at the age of 15, and as they mature, they will widen the lip hole using pieces of wood. The bigger the lip hole, the more and bigger cattle that a father can get for his daughter when trading for a husband. Now this may all seem pretty violent, especially considering that it's surrounding something as tender and nice as love and marriage, but when faced with the harsh conditions of the African wild, it does make sense to show that you're capable of taking care of someone else. Before we go on, like this video, smash the subscribe button, and click the notification bell right now, or this centipede will crawl on your face when you're sleeping. Number 14. The Wudabi Tribe, Niger. Now this tribe, and I'm serious here when I say this, actually own their own version of a beauty contest. But it's not the women that are on display, it's the men. The men of the tribe will paint their faces with red clay and use a white and yellow clay to put dots at perfectly symmetrical points on their face in order to make their faces more, well, symmetrical. Because what is physical beauty if not symmetrical, right? <laughs> well, who are the judges of the contest, you may ask? Some of the women from the village, those who will potentially take on one of these men as their lovers. These unusual beauty contests celebrate the fertility that the rains bring to this particularly dry part of the Sahara Desert. And of course, it's for love, or intercourse, or maybe both. It is probably both. The men of the tribe decorate their faces and dance for hours in order to impress female judges, using beads and lipstick as fashionable objects to adorn themselves. The dance moves kind of emulate the stance of the egret, and they also sing by vibrating their lips painted with a bird lipstick. Number 13. The Longhorn Meow I think that hairstyle is one of the things that I find most beautiful in people, and these tribes in the southwestern part of China really love theirs as well. They earn their name by creating huge headdresses that resemble the longhorn bull. Each headdress comprises of a wooden horn with a comb and the hairpiece, and each hairpiece weighs roughly about 3 kilograms made out of ancestral hair and thread. To go along with these enormous headdresses, the Miao women use hemp in order to create dresses. Then they use threads to create very colorful and intricate designs and patterns. The dresses are worn by women and men alike. The headdresses are not used as much these days as they used to be, because back in the day, women had to wear them for an incredibly long amount of time. And every day, with the process of putting it on being quite a long task. The ancestral hair kind of thing does get me. I mean, how would they maintain it for that long? It's pretty incredible of a tradition though, and the size of the headdresses are impressive as well. Number 12. The Ethiopian Bodai Tribe 
Contrary to the logic of our first entry, the men of the Bodai tribe don't use combat or even fancy headdresses as the main selling point for themselves. No, their competition is who can be the fattest. That's right, a chub contest. That's my kind of contest. And it's not necessarily about who's biggest though. It's more about the shape of the chub. The question for them is, is the ratio of fat to firmness appealing? Meaning is the man thick, but also firm? The men of the village spend an entire year building up their bodies into these shapes, maintaining strict diets, a ceremony that's called the Kail ceremony. The tribe itself lies at the crossroads for many other tribes in Ethiopia's Omo Valley, so they've become fairly eclectic and welcoming, especially each year during the ceremony. Now, where can I sign up for this contest? Because I think I would live greatly in a tribe for a while just to see where I'd end up. I mean, after all, I'm fluffy and firm. Number 11, the Padang tribe of Thailand. You haven't heard of the Padang tribe? Well, they are pretty obscure, so I'm not surprised, honestly. I mean, you don't seem like you're really in the know. Hipstery hype beast jerkiness aside, the Padang tribe are really quite a small and obscure subtribe of the Kaya tribe, which in turn is a subgroup of the Karini, which in turn is a subgroup of Karen, <laughs> the Karen tribe. Oh wow. This tribe is famous for something that's astonishing when seen in person. They can elongate their necks. The coils, made of brass, are a sign of wealth. Actually, Padong literally translates to long neck in English. Do you need more proof of how long their necks really are? Well, according to the Guinness Book of World Records, the record for the longest neck comes in at 15 and 3 fourths inches, belonging to a Padong woman. Because the women are unable to move their heads back and forth, they're forced to drink from straws. Their necks are not actually getting longer though, it's an optical illusion. If that were to happen, you would probably die. What's actually happening is that the brass rings add pressure to the shoulders and the upper back, which push them downwards. Number 10. The Ohaguro, Japan. Now this one I'm filing under beautiful slash creepy, because most of the time when you think of a beautiful smile, you think, you know, pearly white teeth, right? Well, the Ohaguro tribe in Japan does the total opposite. They actually paint their teeth black. In fact, this practice is actually common for many tribes around the world, including Southeast Asia, the Pacific Islands, and even South America though it's most commonly associated with this Japanese tribe. In order to achieve the stunning look, a drink is prepared using iron fillings that are soaked in tea, sake, or vinegar. The taste of the drink is said to be harsh, and they do put cinnamon, cloves, and other herbs and spices in it to help it go down just a tad nicer. After they drink it, that's when their teeth become pitch black, and the process is repeated daily or even once every other day. This seems to have produced permanent results as well. Archaeologists have found skeletons from the Edo period whose teeth were still black. It's unknown where and why this became common practice, though it is associated with the aristocrats from the 8th to the 12th centuries, and mostly for the women. Number 9. The Mentawai Sticking with the whole teeth mod thing, we've got something else that's pretty nightmare inducing. The Mentawai tribe in Indonesia use this practice not only for physical reasons, but for spiritual ones as well. That's a good reason to do something like that, even if it is pretty terrifying. In the Mentawai tribe, they believe that the body and the soul are separate from one another. So if the soul's displeased with the body, it's going to leave and the person will pass away. In order to please it, they actually sharpen their teeth. Sharp teeth, in this and many other tribes around the world for that matter, is actually seen as a beautiful trait to have. Tooth sharpenings would normally have been done at puberty, but because of outside contact with other civilizations, it's really declined. Today, the Mentawa people use a sharpened chisel and some other object that acts like a hammer, and to counteract the pain of the procedure, they don't even use any painkillers. They simply bite down on a piece of wood. Number 8. 
The Himba Tribe, Namibia In the Himba Tribe, and actually many African cultures for that matter, hair is power. For the women of the tribe especially, and to support their powerful hair, they use a mixture of pastes both on their hair and their body. They encapsulate their hair using this paste, which is a reddish color, in order to represent blood, the essence of life, and Earth's clay. The Himba tribe is a nomadic one. Their area of the world is one of the driest and most harsh environments to live in, so the paste helps to act as a coolant as well as many other things. It can reflect marital status, age, wealth, and rank within the group, and the process of modifying one's hair is a communal one. Everyone pitches in to help create the hair bindings. The resulting braids they've created are most of the time grown out by including bits of woven hay, goat hair, and artificial extensions. From birth, the head is shaved clean, women included. But as they age, the community helps to design and grow the child's hairstyle as they gain experience and notoriety within the tribe. Number 7. The Chambri Tribe, New Guinea the Chambri tribe, who reside along the Sepik River in eastern Papua New Guinea, take the cake for the most hardcore body modifications on our list. Now, scarification is something of a new advent in the West, but this tribe's been doing it for centuries. For boys from the ages of 11 to 30, this becomes a rite of passage into becoming a man. Now, this tribe staunchly believes that humans are the descendants of prehistoric crocodile, and to pay homage to their ancestry, they partake in scarification. But how do they do it exactly? Well, they cut deep lines into their backs down to the buttocks in a jagged fashion. This is, as you've probably guessed, to resemble their crocodile ancestors. It's not only meant to resemble the skin of the crocodile, but also as if the man was bitten by one and then swallowed during the ceremony. The preparation for this rite is so intense that some people have even died during the process. They have to live in what's called a spirit house for six weeks. Now, I'm all for trying to be manly, but uh, I think I'm good with where I'm at right now. Number six, Yaiba Teeth, Japan. Now, I really have to wonder what the Japanese fixation is with all these ways of modifying their teeth. This time, instead of blackening their teeth, they also partake in the practice of sharpening them as well. Though, this time, it's actually one specific tooth, the canine. In the West, we know this as a sort of snaggle tooth or vampire fangs. This is also not really something that's necessarily related to any specific tribe because it's kind of modern and it's used in villages and cities alike. The West would begin to catch on to this trend in 2011 when an article in the New York Times came out detailing the craze. Apparently Japanese men actually find it quite sexy and attractive in a female. The imperfection of young ladies' snaggle teeth is so attractive to Japanese men because of its childlike quality. The women, who have the perfect smiles with pearly whites, actually intimidate the men. And so, the imperfections in their teeth makes them to be perceived as more approachable. Being approachable is hard enough in these modern times, so I'm totally with you, Japanese guys. Imperfections are what make things beautiful in the end. Number five. Foot binding, China. Probably one of the more well known entries on our list, foot binding is a pretty ancient tradition all over China, with the new Chinese government outlawing it in 1911. Known as lotus feet, the process involves, as you may have guessed by the name, binding the woman's feet in order to create a sort of lotus-like appearance. The process itself takes a lot of time and is quite painful, so you have to really want those feet if you're thinking about doing it. Starting in the Tang Dynasty in the year 900, foot binding was practiced up until 1911, but even afterwards, some small villages still did it until the 1930s and 40s. Many of the older women, 38% of those in fact, that are over the age of 80, had feet deformed by foot binding. Bound feet were a sign of status at the time. To have a daughter with lotus feet meant that the family was rich enough not to work. 
Also, Lotus Feet soon developed into a symbol for virginity because she couldn't run away. She was forced to stay home and take care of her household duties. All of this just so she could do housework. Number 4. The Zooi Tribe Drawing an age-old tradition from their ancestral tribe, the Brazilian Zooi tribe partake in the ancient tradition of not only lip piercing, but the extension of the lip as well. Using the leg bones from a dead spider monkey, they then pierce the lip of the young and extend it to use the same bone. Needless to say, it's a pretty painful process, one that usually begins around the age of 7 to 9 years old. As they do get older, larger and larger plugs are used, creating truly massive lip holes. Along with the lip holes, women use elaborate headdresses that are made from the white breast feathers of the king vulture. And they also paint their bodies with something called uricum, which is a vibrant red paste made from crushing anato seeds. Rituals mark many milestones in the life of the tribe, such as birth and death, and the greatest communal ritual is the sepai. It's named after the naturally fermented drink that's served during the ritual, and the dawn after a night of dancing, the men actually ingest the rest of the drink and then vomit to expel what's left. Sounds pretty psychedelic if you ask me. Number 3. The Brockpa Community India has a very rich history when it comes to beauty standards and different practices, and for our number three, we will be looking specifically at the headdresses of the Brakpa community. It's said that Alexander the Great's army nested in these regions during his conquest, and the headdress has rows of coins that are stitched together as a decoration, with some of them being crafted during the 1890s. Even the men of the village sport flowers and ribbons. The headdresses are worn while the women work out in the fields for the day. Which I'm sure probably poses a pretty big challenge. On top of their kaftan, the wearer adorns it with shells, coins, threads, and animal fur. And they also put silver jewelry around their necks and arms. Some of the jewelry has been in the family for many, many years with no new ornaments made or sold outside of the community. For some reason, this exclusivity really makes me want to get one of them even more. Number 2. Apatani Tribe Keeping our next entry in the country of India, we now have the Apatani tribe, who use facial tattoos on their women. Now, they're not just henna tattoos either. These are real inked tattoos that these women will have for life. The women of the tribe are renowned for their beauty as well, even without the permanent facial ink. Because of this well-known beauty, the village has come under many a vicious attack over the years from people who are looking to violate these poor women. Beauty comes with a price in this crazy world. And because of these attacks, the village elders decided to use the tattoos as a repellent to these jerks. Now, I'm putting this insult lightly, seeing as we don't want to use too much profanity here, but I think we can all agree that the people doing the attacking are definitely the worst. To further deter people from literally stealing these women, the women also have nose plugs put in. I mean, it's kind of the opposite of trying to become more beautiful in the end. The practice just serves to make them less desirable. Number 1. Extraocular Implants, Netherlands Now for our final entry, we're in the Western world, and more specifically in the Netherlands, who have actually legalized what is known as extraocular implants. It all sounds like some kind of weird sci-fi kind of thing, but it's actually very real and available to most anyone who thinks it's worth the money. The process is one that's purely cosmetic, involving taking a piece of jewelry and then implanting it within a superficial part of the eye called the interpalpebral conjunctiva. And when it's said and done, voila, you have a bedazzled eye. The procedure will set you back 750 pounds. It's also very risky. However, apparently the whole procedure is very quick. Because it's such a new kind of thing, it's unknown what the long-term effects really are. But I do know one thing. I like being able to see. And for me, it's so totally not worth it. If having some jewelry jammed into your eyeball is going to make you feel more complete, more power to you. 
All jokes aside, looking into how many different cultures define and view beauty is something I feel we all need to do. It can deepen our own understandings and definitions, and in the end, help us to accept others, and especially ourselves. Which of these practices did you connect with the most, and which ones might have shocked you? Let us know in the comments below. Also, check out the other cool stuff showing up on the screen, and I'll see you next time.